heartbeat increasing, exam fast approaching. Please don't you worry. Relax and drink water. You know, I feel the biggest cure in this world is water. Forget about medicines, forget about healing. Just keep on sipping water continuously and the stress level actually goes down. Trust me. This is Hina from Team Tess. I welcome you. Backward Ginti Chalu Ho Gai Hai. This is going to be my last session, of course, this year to help you with the Langana set. We have done 15, 15 questions, but then in detail, the authors we have covered are really important. So, today's lecture lecture, listen to and then the exam and tell us how was it, okay? Now, before we begin, a good news for you. I told you in my last session, Kalyani Ma'am is beginning with an online course, a detailed online course for Net English, okay? Now, you will get live classes in this six days a week, along with the entire material, okay, printed books, PDF notes, there will be quizzes, there will be sessions on paper one as well. The date is March 20th, so if you want to register, if you want to recommend it to your friends, believe me, this course will be worth it. Contact us on the number 93878-39871, okay? Chale, chalu kare, chalu karte hai. Three, two, one. Fingers crossed. It will be good. It will be good. Your paper will be good. Question number one. Who described modernism as being concerned with disenchantment of our culture with culture itself? A. Stephen Spender. B. Malcolm Bradbury. C. Lionel Trilling. Or D. Matthew Arnold. Disenchantment matlab disappointed. So disappointment of our culture with culture itself. Kisne bola ye? Option C, Lionel Trilling, Kisme Bola, in his 1965 collection of essays called as Beyond Culture. Lionel, you know, was an American literary critic who lived from 1904 to 1975. So disenchantment of culture by Lionel Trilling in Beyond Culture. Question number two, who first claimed that every human being was born with a language acquisition device? A. Michael West. B. C. J. Dodson, C. M. A. K. Halliday, or D. Noam Chomsky. L. A. D. In the brain, fitted in the brain, language acquisition device. This is a theory by option D. Noam Chomsky. Look at Noam. He's considered as the father of modern linguistics. He's 94 years old. lived in the lives in the United States. Okay. Now I have to tell you about L. A. D. LAD concept says that humans are born with an innate facility of acquiring language. So, like just like a child acquires the ability to walk, a child equally or similarly acquires the ability to learn a language too. And this is done with the help of a language acquisition device. device brain me, but then this is a theory which is given by no. And I actually agree with it. Okay. Question number three, which of the following is not written by E.V. Lucas? Not written by Lucas. A. Character and Comedy. B. Old Lamps for New. C. Loiterer's Harvest. Or D. The Club of Queer Trades. I thought I'll make it easy, okay? Because I've given the covers of the books here. Look here. Character and Comedy. Niche likhawa hai E. Lucas. Old Lamps for New, Nietzsche Likhawa Hai E. Lucas. Loiterer's Hard West, a book of essays by E. V. Lucas. So kya bacha? The Club of Queer Trades. Kisne likha? Gilbert Keith Chesterton. Okay, now easy. Now you know about Lucas, okay? He was an English humorist, essayist and more. He lived from 1898 to 1938. Okay, let's move on. Here, here is Chesterton. Of course, I've kept Chesterton here. The Club of Queer Trades is a book by Chesterton, the man on the screen. Let's move on to question number four. Identify the pair of words which are not propound, pronounced alike. Either pair of words diye gaye hai, which ones are not pronounced alike? A, ki, ki. They are pronounced the same. B is plain, plain. Same. C is die, die, same. Now D is body or body, body, body or body. 
बहुत ही धीमा सा प्रोनाउंसिएशन डिफरेंस है बट दैट इज द आंसर ओके तो पहले को बी ओ डी वाई को अपन प्रोनाउंस करेंगे बॉडी बॉडी जबकि बी ए डब्ल्यू डी वाई को प्रोनाउंस करेंगे बॉडी बॉडी चलिए लेट्स मूव ऑन टू क्वेश्चन नंबर फाइव इन विच ईयर वॉज द क्लॉज एडेड टू द चार्टर ऑफ ईस्ट इंडिया इन अलॉटिंग नॉट लेस देन वन लाख रुपीज एनुअली टू द एजुकेशन ऑफ इंडियंस उस टाइम में एक लाख रुपया खर्च करना That's immense, but then India was also big country. Tell me, when was this charter of the in which year this clause was added? A, eighteen twelve. B, eighteen thirteen. C, nineteen thirty five. Or D, eighteen fifty four. It is option B, eighteen thirteen. In fact, the Charter Act of eighteen thirteen is called as the foundation stone of English education in India. Now this act asserted Britain crowns sovereignty over British India. So, जो crown है, जो उनका राज घराना है, that got the sovereignty over British India first because of the Charter Act of 1813. Second, it was decided that one lakh rupees annually will be allotted for the improvement of literary and scientific knowledge in India. And third. This Charter Act permitted Christian missionaries to preach their religion across India. Okay, easy. Let's move on to question number six. Quotation marks. As best critics have designed the laws of time, place, persons, he observeth. From no needful rule he swerveth. Who among the following are the above lines associated with? A. Thomas Decker, B. Christopher Marlowe, C. Philip Massinger, or D. Ben Jonson, who said the laws of time, place, persons he observeth from no needful rule he swerveth. These lines are by option D. Ben Jonson in the prologue to Walpani. Okay, अभी ये जो he है ना इधर he observeth. This Ben Jonson has used for himself. and he basically has used unity of person in place of unity of action so when he used unity of person in place of unity of action he used these lines here okay in prologue to walpani easy question number 7 match the authors with their representativeness here are three three authors given and what do they represent you have to tell me i'll directly tell you the answer it will be easy Let's move. The answer is A. So now listen. Millet, Shorter, and Moi. They represent gender. Okay, feminism. Morrison, Hall, Gates Jr. They represent race. Achebe, Said, Gugi. They represent colonialism. Post-colonial writers. Rich, Butler, Warner. They represent sexuality. Easy. Listen to it once again. It's easy. Question number eight on your screen: Which book written by Mikhail Bakhtin explores the concept of carnivalesque? So, carnivalesque by Mikhail Bakhtin was discussed in A. The dialogical principle. B. Dialogic imagination. C. After Bakhtin or D. Rabelais and his world. It is option D, Rabelais and his world. Now, what does Mikhail Bakhtin say about carnivalesque? Carnivalesque is taken from the word carnival. Carnival, तो आप जानते ही हैं, बढ़िया शोर शराबा मेला चल रहा है. That is carnival. Okay. Now, what is carnival in literature or carnivalesque literature? First, whenever there is a reversal of social hierarchy, what did Bakhtin say? When social hierarchy does not play a role in any literary work. second when there is eccentricity used in literary work for example eccentric words are used and third when there is a non linear pattern of narration when these three things primarily are used in any literary work it becomes carnivalesque work carnivalesque literature okay this was explored this concept was explored by bakhtin in his book rabelais and his world Okay, this takes us to the ninth question. Identify the writer associated with porno grammar. Porno grammar is discussed by A. Jean Paul Sartre, B. Jean Racine, C. Marquis de Sade, or D. Raymond Queneau. 
बताइए सर नेम्स देखिए इनके उसी में आंसर छिपा हुआ है द आंसर इज ऑप्शन सी मार्की डेड एस ए डी इसी से ही हमको टर्म मिला सेडिस्ट Sadism, which means act of sexual cruelty. Now, Marquis, I have to tell you, was a French philosopher who lived from 1740 to 1814. Okay. Now he wrote few important works like the 120 Days of Sodom or Justin. In these works, he has spoken about porno grammar. Okay. And his works basically, in in his in his works in Marquis' works. sexual fantasies result in violence and suffering and that is why the term sadism was taken from him which again i'll tell you means the act of sexual cruelty okay so just remember marquis de sade associated with porno grammar okay question number 10 on your screen the semi autobiographical work is shakespeare dead which explores the controversy over the authorship of the shakespearean canon was written by easy le lo is shakespeare dead is a work by a emerson b henry james c mark twain or d edgar allan poe it is by s l clemens ab aap kahenge clemens to hai nahi kya hai come on you know it mark twain's real name is s l clemens Clement, sorry. So the answer is C. Now we know about Mark Twain. He was an American writer and a humorist. He lived from eighteen thirty-five to nineteen ten. Okay. Now in this work, is Shakespeare dead? It's actually a semi-autobiographical work of Mark Twain in which he says that हम शेक्सपियर को जो credit देते हैं ना about writing so many works that is not correct because most probably Shakespeare never wrote those works. Did Shakespeare even exist? okay he says that in fact according to him some legal professional had written all the works that we attribute to shakespeare okay this is what is shakespeare dead by mark twain is about yeah let's move on to question number 11 who is the author of the book the coolie woman the odyssey of indenture a shani mutu b lakshmi prasad c got It, she's pronounced as Gautra Bahadur, okay, Gautra Bahadur, or D. Rama by Espinet. The Coolie Woman, the Odyssey of Intention, is written by option C. Gautra Bahadur. Now, Gautra Bahadur is a Guyanese American writer from Guyana, and this book is a biography of Sujaria, which woman? Sujaria, who was the great grandmother of the author. ओके इसके अलावा कूली वुमन आल्सो टॉक्स अबाउट द इंडेंचर्ड लेबर सिस्टम व्हाट इज इंडेंचर्ड लेबर सिस्टम व्हेन यू गिव लेबर बट यू डू नॉट गेट मनी ओके लेबर विदाउट पेमेंट इज इंडेंचर्ड सो दिस इज व्हाट द कूली वुमन टॉक्स अबाउट एंड इट इज द बायोग्राफी ऑफ सुजरिया इजी क्वेश्चन नंबर 12 आइडेंटिफाई द करेक्ट क्रोनोलॉजिकल सीक्वेंस ऑफ द नोबेल प्राइज विनर्स फॉर लिटरेचर few authors are given you have to tell us chronologically kisko ascending to descending they got the nobel prize i'll tell you the answer directly let me not read it the answer is option b now basically pearl s buck received the nobel prize in 1938 nadine gordimer received the nobel prize in 1991 while tony morrison received the nobel prize in 1993 So Pearl was American, Nadine South African, and Tony is again American. Okay, let's move on to question number thirteen. Molly Bloom's famous account at the end of Ulysses may be best described as a automatic writing, b stream of consciousness, c trauma writing, or d psychomachia. Molly Bloom, you know the character in James Joyce's Ulysses. speaks these lines in the 18th and the final episode it is very famously called as molly bloom's soliloquy soliloquy connected with option b stream of consciousness okay now this soliloquy cont contains very highly sexual language we know that molly and leopold although they were husband wife but they had a sexless relationship but that does not mean that molly did not have sex in fact she had marriage out of sex 
So he had, she had extra marital affairs. So here she begins with her soliloquy, her stream of consciousness mode when, you know, Leopold is lying down next to her in the bed. And then she begins with this soliloquy. And let me tell you, a core question, agar hai, which line is considered to be the longest sentence, longest sentence in English language, then it is considered to be this Molly Bloom soliloquy from Ulysses. It consists of 4,491 words. But officially, if you look at the Guinness Book of Records, waha pe jo record darj kiya gaya hai of the longest line in English language, it is from Absalom, Absalom by William Faulkner, which consists of 1,287 words. Okay, so Molly's sentence consists of 4491 words, while Faulkner's Absalom, Absalom sentence consists of 1287 words. Faulkner's is recorded in Guinea's book, but Molly's Ulysses is not recorded in the Guinea's book. Easy? So much great difference. This takes us to question number 14. In which poem does Wordsworth describe himself as a worshipper of nature? I worship you, nature. Wordsworth said it in A Tintern Abbey, B Daffodils, C The Solitary Reaper, or D The World is Too Much With Us. Tell me. It is option A Tintern Abbey. Look here on the screen. Lines composed a few miles above Tintern Abbey by William Wordsworth, the great romantic poet who lived from 1770 to 1850. Now, this poem, Tintern Abbey, is his childhood memory, okay? How he communicated with natural beauty, how he had a connection with nature. And this poem is actually a monologue. Along with the communion with the nature, Wordsworth connects a religious sentiment with nature. And that is when he says that he is a worshipper of nature. This is Tintern Abbey, okay? And the last question of the day, it is... Robert Codre's table alphabetical of 1604 was an attempt to explain the meanings of dash words. Table alphabetical explains the meanings of dash words. A common, B Hebrew, C slang, or D hard. Tell me. It is option D hard. Now, Robert Codre was an English clergyman who lived from 1538 to 1604. He produced one of the earliest dictionaries of the English language, which was called as Table Alphabetical. Now, I have given this screen pe diya hai aapko cover. It has been titled Table Alphabetical. Ka. So, I will read it where the hard words are specified. Kiya gaya hai. So, let me read it for you. It says, Table Alphabetical containing and teaching the true writing and understanding of hard, usual English words borrowed from the Hebrew, Greek, Latin, or French, and C, with the interpretation thereof of plain, with the interpretation thereof by plain English words gathered for the benefit and help of ladies, gentlewomen, or any other unskillful persons and better whereby they may the more easily understand many hard English words, which they shall hear or read in scriptures, sermons, or elsewhere, and also be made able to use the same aptly themselves. Oh my God, such a long title of Robert Codre's Table Alphabetical, published in 1604, one of the earliest dictionaries of English language, which explains the meanings of hard words. And we are done. All the best to you aspirants. The sky is the limit. If the paper is awesome, you will rock. If it is not, you will still rock because your life is awesome, right? And it will be. Just, just believe, 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 and it will come to you. But of course, from our heart, we don't want that you should not rock the paper. Go rock, man. It's your day. All the best from Team Test. We love you. Take care of yourself. Bye-bye.